Hi everyone, this is Cooking with Kurt. Today my husband Donald and I are going to show you how to make a strawberry shortcake. This is a light strawberry chiffon cake that's filled and covered with fresh whipped cream and strawberries. It's a refreshing cake that's perfect for spring or summer. This recipe was requested by a lot of you and we hope you like this video. We're going to start by making the strawberry chiffon. Take four eggs and separate them into yolks and whites. Let them come to room temperature. Preheat your oven to 340 degrees Fahrenheit. Then take two nine inch round cake pans and line the bottoms with parchment paper. Do not grease the parchment paper or the sides of the pan. Soak two cake strips in cold water for five minutes. Then shake off the excess water, but do not wring and place these soaked cake strips around each of the cake pans. In a blender, add in half a cup of sliced strawberries, about two and a half ounces of strawberries, and three tablespoons of water. Blend them together. It should make about half a cup of strawberry puree. Set this pureed strawberry aside. Then take a large non-reactive bowl in a sieve, Add in one and one fourth cups of cake flour, two teaspoons of baking powder, one fourth cup of granulated sugar, and three fourth teaspoon of salt. Sift these together. Then add in the four room temperature egg yolks, half a cup of vegetable oil, the pureed strawberry, one drop of red food coloring gel paste, half a teaspoon of finely grated lemon zest, and half a teaspoon of finely grated orange zest. Beat this together with an electric mixer just until it is smooth and well blended. Next, in the bowl of your stand mixer, add in the four room temperature egg whites and half a teaspoon of cream of tartar. And with the whisk attachment, beat on medium speed until it looks frothy, about two minutes. Then turn the speed up to medium high and very slowly add in one third cup of granulated sugar while continuing to beat. When all the sugar has been added, turn the speed up to high and beat until you see stiff glossy peaks like this. Then one third at a time, gradually and very gently fold this meringue into the cake mixture until very well combined. Be sure to scrape the bottom and sides of the bowl for unmixed cake mixture. When the mixture is uniform, divide the batter equally into the two prepared round cake pans. We're going to bake these in our preheated oven at 340 degrees Fahrenheit for 25 to 30 minutes. Or until the surfaces are firm and a toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean. Immediately invert them onto metal racks and let them cool sitting on the racks for five minutes. After five minutes, lift off the pans. Peel off the parchment paper the cakes were baked with and let the cakes cool to room temperature. While we're waiting for the chiffon cakes to cool, we're gonna work on the whipped cream frosting. In the clean bowl of your stand mixer, add in eight ounces of room temperature cream cheese half cup of granulated sugar, one tablespoon of vanilla extract, and one teaspoon of finely grated orange zest. Then, using a paddle attachment, beat them together on medium speed till the cream cheese has softened and the mixture is smooth, about two to three minutes. Scrape down the bowl for any unmixed cream cheese. Then, while beating on medium speed, slowly add in three cups of very cold heavy cream and continue to beat for about two minutes until the cream cheese and heavy cream are combined and uniform. Stop the mixer and scrape down the petal attachment and the bowl for any unmixed cream cheese. Mix on medium speed for another one minute. Then switch to a whisk attachment and continue beating on medium high speed until the mixture forms very stiff peaks like this. Leave this whipped cream frosting in the fridge till you're ready to use it. When the chiffon cakes have cooled to room temperature and your whipped cream frosting is prepared, we're ready to assemble the cake. Take a cake board that's larger than 9 inches in diameter. This is a 10 inch cake board. 
and place it on a revolving cake stand. Then take about 13 and a half ounces of strawberries or the remaining strawberries in a one pound container and cut the top stems off so the bases are flat. Then cut them in half lengthwise so they make a heart shape. Then put them in a large mixing bowl. Then add in about three cups of the prepared white frosting and mix this together. With one of the chiffon rounds on the cake board, transfer this filling mixture on top and spread it so it makes a flat and even layer. Make sure the strawberries are evenly distributed so every slice of cake will have strawberries in the filling. It would be very sad if you got a slice of cake with no strawberries in the center. With the second chiffon round on top of the strawberry cream filling, spread a generous layer of the white frosting on top of the cake, as well as the sides of the cake. Then use a bench scraper to smoothen out the surfaces as much as possible till you're happy with the way your cake looks. Make sure to save enough of the whipped cream frosting for the top border. Then, thank you. Fill a piping bag with the remaining frosting and attach a large open star tip. I'm using a number 1M. And make a whipped cream border around the top circumference of the cake, right at the edge, in whatever pattern you'd like. I'm creating a subtle S shape, then lifting the bag to create a pointed tip at the end of the S. Start the next S shape at the bottom of the previous S shape. Continue this pattern around the outer circumference of the cake. The S shapes should overlap slightly to make sure there are no gaps between them so that the strawberry gelatin that we'll add later will not leak through. When you've finished piping the border, take another 16 ounces or one pound of strawberries and like before, cut the top stems off so the bases are flat. Pick out the biggest and roundest strawberry and place it cut side down in the middle of the cake. Separate the remaining strawberries into three groups, small, medium, and large. Then cut the remaining strawberries in half lengthwise so they make a heart shape. Arrange these half strawberries starting at the whipped cream border with a cut side facing towards the center but leaning slightly backwards leaning out towards the edge of the cake. Using the smallest strawberry slices, start with a circle of strawberries on the outer edge, right next to the whipped cream border, so the outer ring of strawberries is well defined with clean lines. This ring of strawberries should form a barrier that is snug against the whipped cream border. Next, using the biggest strawberry slices, as close in size to the center strawberry, form a circle of strawberries around the center strawberry. Once those two circles are created, the smallest strawberries for the outermost circle and the biggest strawberries for the innermost circle, fill in the rest of the cake's top surface with rings of the medium-sized strawberries, arranged similarly with a cut side facing towards the center and leaning slightly towards the edge of the cake working from the outside in. Try to match strawberries according to size to make an even looking pattern as much as possible. When you're happy with the strawberry topping pattern, place the assembled cake in the fridge to chill for a minimum of one hour before adding the gelatin topping. If you have any leftover strawberry slices, now it's fair game to eat them. When your cake is sufficiently chilled and you're ready for the gelatin topping, take a heat-proof container, add in 0.35 ounces or 10 grams of strawberry gelatin powder and a half cup of cool water. Stir this until the gelatin has completely dissolved. Then pour in a half cup of boiling water and stir to combine. Put this strawberry gelatin mixture in the fridge for five to 10 minutes to cool down and firm up a bit till it reaches a thicker syrupy texture. When the mixture is no longer runny and reaches a thicker syrupy texture that can be drizzled, spoon the strawberry gelatin over the cold strawberries on the chilled cake, covering the top of the strawberries as well as in between the strawberries. 
The whipped cream border should contain the gelatin till it has firmed up and prevent it from running down the sides of the cake. Rest the finished cake in the fridge for the gelatin to firm up and for the layers to set for a minimum of 6 hours to overnight. We recommend serving this cake cold for a more refreshing strawberry flavor. And there it is, a strawberry shortcake filled and covered with a light whipped cream frosting, fresh strawberries, and topped with a strawberry gelatin glaze. Ang sarap! Ang sarap! Mmm, yum! Mm. The strawberry chiffon is so light and airy. And the whipped cream with the fresh strawberries is the perfect combination. Tastes like summer. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. Please let us know in the comment section below if you're planning to make this strawberry shortcake. Send us pictures of your creations on Facebook and Instagram. The links are below. And if you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Cooking with Kurt. And don't forget to click on the bell so you get notified when we post new cooking videos. Maraming salamat! <laughs>